In this module, we will try to get an understanding of the term food rheology. Uh, we will look at some of the uh, important definitions and then in later modules we will consider some of the rheological models that are useful to us in uh, designing food processing systems. So food rheology is the science of deformation and flow of matter. In other words, how materials respond to applied stress and strain. Now, as I said, this information is uh, really critical in designing a variety of food processing equipment, such as pumps, mixers, heating and cooling systems, as well as designing extrusion systems. So let us look at some of the definitions of these terms. Some of these may be new to you. So rheology is about deformation of a body when it is subjected to a stress. So what do we mean by body? Well, here we are looking at either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And again, if we consider solid, let's look at an ideal solid. Ideal solid is a body that deforms in an elastic manner. That means that for an ideal solid, the energy of deformation is fully recovered when the stress is removed. Now recall the uh, animation that you may have seen in another module about a solid object that is fixed to a base. When we apply a shear stress at the top surface, it will deform. But if we remove the shear stress, then it returns to its original shape and the energy of deformation is recovered. The same thing happens with a rubber band. If you pull a rubber band, in other words, you apply stress on it, it will deform. But when you remove that force, it goes back to its original shape. So for an ideal solid, the energy of deformation is fully recovered. Now let's look at an ideal liquid or a gas. In this case, the body will deform irreversibly. In other words, it flows. So energy of deformation in case of an ideal liquid or a gas is converted to heat and it cannot be recovered when the stress is removed. But in reality, we have neither ideal solids or ideal fluids. Real solids can be deformed irreversibly when subjected to certain forces. This deformation is called creep. Now you know that if you take a piece of metal, uh, you can hammer it and convert it into a thin plate where it has deformed irreversibly. Very few liquids also show ideal behavior. For most liquids, their behavior is between a solid and a liquid, and we call them viscoelastic. So we need reliable mathematical expressions that can describe the physical behavior of bodies when they are subjected to stress. For example, when we apply pressure on a liquid to pump it, we want to know how it will deform. So the ability to predict what will happen to that liquid under stress becomes very important. 